Hello wrestling fans, The Wrestling Wizard here and welcome to another video. So, what the heck is going on with Seth freaking Rollins? What's going on? How and why is he currently absent from the Wrestlemania card in its entirety? He's not part of any of it at the moment. Now fear not, WWE surely have a plan, an ace up their sleeve. There's no way that they would leave purposely Seth Rollins off the WrestleMania card. I mean, he literally caused the heist of the century at WrestleMania 31. He slayed the beast at WrestleMania 35. There's no way they would leave him off that card. There's definitely plans. And they want to draw attention to this. The fact that they're lasering in on this is a good thing. It is a positive thing for Seth Rollins because there's definitely going to be some form of evolution with his current character, the visionary gimmick. Um, it's going to go even darker, even more sinister. It's going to be even more evil. And you saw his facial expressions when he found out he wasn't going to be at WrestleMania. We know he's going to snap. We know he's going to attack. And we know there's going to be big plans. Now, it wasn't that long ago. He was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Roman Reigns. And there were plans also, allegedly, that originally he was supposed to win um, the matchup at day one before Brock Lesnar obviously got interjected into that match. He's supposed to be the champion and then Big E and Seth Rollins were supposed to have a matchup at WrestleMania, which would have been cool. Um, it would have uh, put Big E in a better spot than he is right now. And those two deserved it after all their hard work over the last year or so, or even more than that, even through the pandemic era or uncertain times as WWE want you to refer to that as. And yes, that would have been cool. There were also rumours that he was going to face Shane McMahon. Obviously, that's completely outside of his control. Vince actually fired his own son, um, and you can't control that. So give WWE a buy on that. But how committed and what a passionate performer in the performances he's given as his current gimmick at the moment in Seth Rollins and the in-ring performances as well, he deserves to be in a big spot at WrestleMania. So what is going to be that spot? Now, first and foremost, I'm going to get your thoughts and opinions. So get down in the comments section. What do you think is going to happen with Seth Rollins? Do you think this whole Seth Rollins blanking out his profile pictures on his social media is all a work and is all a hoax or just to get us more invested in Seth Rollins and what's going to happen next to draw attention potentially to a returning superstar, which we're going to get into a mo in a moment. But before we start, I don't want them to go down the obvious route of just Seth Rollins randomly interjects himself into a mid-card title match. Either Ricochet, the Intercontinental Champion, or Finn Balor, the United States Champion. The United States Championship matchup should just be Finn Balor versus Damian Priest, a demon, demon version of Damian Priest. And then Finn Balor ultimately gets Damian Priest over at WrestleMania in this dark heel gimmick. Or even Finn could win, but Damien shows a strong, a very strong showing at, at Mania. You know, he's been very protected, Damien Priest, up until recently. So I'd be surprised if Finn beats him if those two have a matchup at WrestleMania. Seth Rollins could just go in, attack Finn Balor, and straight away he's got a legitimate reason to have a matchup. Finn will want him in the matchup, and, and there you go. But I don't want that to happen. It's too predictable, it's too obvious, and it's not really very intriguing into WrestleMania season. Intercontinental title with Ricochet, I don't want the Intercontinental title to feel like it's hot potato. You know, Sami Zayn seemingly just passed it on and I think that really defined down the Intercontinental title. The only reason Sami Zayn lost to Ricochet was so Sami Zayn didn't have the title at WrestleMania when fighting Johnny Knoxville. Because imagine Johnny Knoxville with the Intercontinental title. That would be absolute madness and that's obviously why they did that. But that takes away the relevance, the prestige of the Intercontinental title. Now, the other side of the argument would be if Seth did, say, win the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania and get in that matchup, whatever it may be, we still don't know yet with the Intercontinental title, then you could say if he kept it for a lengthy run, it would bring prestige to the title because someone like Seth Rollins is holding it. Now, if WWE are doing this whole merging the two belts together, which remains to be seen whether they actually do that, they're billing it as that, but whether they actually do that moving forward remains to be seen, then yes, giving the mid-card titles to high-end superstars, mid to high-end superstars, makes more sense, doesn't it? But Ricochet 
deserves a lengthy run as the Intercontinental title champion. Because title champion, that doesn't make any sense, as the champ. Because he deserves it. He's been underutilised for very long now and he's finally getting his moment to shine and keep it that way. Plus he's awesome in the ring as well. So that I don't want them to go down the obvious route. Now the route that people keep bringing up is going to be chatter amongst the wrestling community at the moment until it doesn't happen or does happen is Cody Rhodes returning to WWE and having some confrontation with Seth whether that leads to a matchup or whatever. That would be awesome. I'd be down for that. Um, obviously we don't know what the plans are in that regards. We don't know what the contract negotiations in regards to Cody Rhodes are at the moment, whether he signed or he hasn't signed or what the plan's gonna be, but I'm down for that. That would be cool. Now, I know you're gonna think this next option is madness, but The Fiend has to be part of the conversation when it comes to WWE and WrestleMania. And why? Because Seth Rollins wouldn't be the way he is now without the influence of The Fiend. The Fiend changed Seth Rollins when he went into that weird messiah gimmick, which I didn't, wasn't a massive fan of, and now of course into the visionary gimmick. He's been a whack job, down to the suits, down to the Joker-esque persona. It's been weird, and that influence has been originally set from The Fiend. The Fiend changed Seth Rollins, there's no doubt about that. The last time we saw The Fiend, of course, in WWE in the ring, was it WrestleMania? Could things come full circle? Could we see The Fiend return at WrestleMania? I know it is a massive outshot. I'm probably clutching onto straws here. It's probably never gonna happen, but we've got to speculate. Worth talking about, it could potentially happen. And after all, The Fiend and Seth Rollins do have a connection. There were technical glitches, <laughs> remember, a while back the mid part of last year where The Fiend's music accidentally played in a Seth Rollins segment. Now, I do believe at the time Bray Wyatt was still part of WWE, so maybe that was part of a work storyline. But nevertheless, it's always going to be in the conversation and I just got to get it out of the way now before someone brings it up, which I'm sure they already have. Now, another option could be, because if you think about this, right, at WrestleMania, 31. Seth Rollins went under the radar, didn't he? Remember, he had that amazing matchup with Randy Orton. That RKO from Randy Orton was amazing. And by the way, did you see the RKO this week on Monday Night Raw as well? That was absolutely amazing on Chad Gable. But the one on Seth Rollins, it was a highlight. And we all sort of thought, what a matchup. Randy Orton's a legend. He beat Seth Rollins. And you forgot about Seth Rollins. And then he cashed in on Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns and Heist of the Century. Amazing WrestleMania moment. We're still talking about it and we will talk about it from years to come. Now, Seth Rollins earned a title shot. It was meant to be a one-to-one -one title shot with Roman Reigns originally. And we know, of course, then he got interjected into what was supposed to be a fatal four-way match at day one, which he was supposed to win. And that didn't happen and brought Lesnar went away victorious because, of course, Roman Reigns caught COVID. They couldn't fight one-to-one. -one. So Seth Rollins kind of got done a little bit. He also got done up like a kipper as well at Royal Rumble. You know, of course, losing through a disqualification isn't technically a loss, loss. So could he snake his way in some way or interfere in some regard in the Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar matchup? I think it's a massive outshot. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think they're going to build up that matchup for anything other than Roman Reigns standing on top of Brock Lesnar with the two belts being the victorious champion and dominant champion, and who can argue that he deserves that? I also wouldn't be extremely upset if Brock Lesnar won, <laughs> to be honest, either, because I've been enjoying him as a babyface. And people that say this matchup is stale, they've seen it a thousand times over, they haven't. Roman Reigns is dominant, badass of a hill, one of the top wrestlers in the world now. And Brock Lesnar's a face, and a fun face to watch. Not like we've seen before. Before we saw a shite version of Roman Reigns, and a pretty stale version of Brock Lesnar. So that match deserves it to be those two. But Seth Rollins could potentially get involved. You can't write it off. Ridiculous other outshots, so they've got to be brought up as he could bring up a talent from NXT. We saw Bron Breaker uh, make an appearance on Raw this past week. We know he's been billed as a, a man of the future. I don't think he's ready just yet, but if you want to spotlight his in-ring ability, Put him up against Roman, um, Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins, that's the one we're talking about in this video. 
and showcase his skills, like get him out there in front of hundreds of thousands of people. A lot of people weren't really aware of Braun Breaker, I got the impression on Raw through not watching the NXT 2.0 brand. So potentially a way of elevating some, some young talent and Seth Rollins likes to work and elevate um, talented superstars. He puts people over time and time again, so why not? Looking forward, you know, looking through to the future. Um, so loads of scenarios. Again, be really appreciative uh, to get your feedback. So get down in the comment section. I always like to hear your opinions. Uh, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, be really appreciative if you could like the video, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and really looking forward to WrestleMania season. There's definitely going to be some changes coming up, some more confirmed matches, and I will look forward to seeing you in hopefully another wrestling video.